the men in black, or MIBs as John Keel calls them. John Keel, the main investigator of the Mothman, would often say, watch your back for the men in black. The men in black, or MIB, were unknown persons that frequented the small town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, usually dressed from head to toe in black suits, white shirts, black ties, and black shoes, which all appeared to be in perfect appearance, but yet completely out of style for the time of 1966. They were known for attempting to threaten witnesses and reporters of strange occurrences such as the Mothman into silence. They were sometimes thought of as damage control, as if their job was to contain and stifle information from getting out to the public. Not only did they visit reporter Mary Heyer and question her about the creature, but one of them threatened Mothman witness Connie Carpenter with a vague threatening note reading, Be careful girl, I can get you yet, and ripped her blouse while trying to pull her into his car. When Mothman witness Fade Whit Laporte and her brother tried to return to the TNT area a few days after their sighting, it was blocked off by two men in black who would not let them enter. Their hair is jet black and shiny, and their skin is said to be without blemish or even almost translucent. Strange eyes sometimes covered by dark sunglasses, and movement that appeared to be sometimes robotic in nature. Mary Heyer noted the olive skin tone and that they never blinked their eyes. The men in black also had strange eating behaviors. Witnesses say they didn't know how to use a knife and fork, and the witches had to come over and show the man how to cut his steak. They didn't chew their food, they just kind of swallowed it. They usually traveled in groups of two or three, and had a knack for knowing things about the witnesses they taunted. Things that only the witness knew. There were even reports of them being masters of illusion by way of being able to make themselves appear and disappear without a trace. Some have reported them carrying sophisticated gadgets, and one woman claimed that the MIBs erased part of her memory. John Keel, the main investigator of the Mothman and author of the Mothman Prophecies, is credited for popularizing the term Men in Black as a generic way of describing these mysterious men. Keel would chase the Men in Black in attempts to confront them. He had local police in many towns looking for them. When he was in West Virginia and Ohio, people would call his hotel room and tell him that the MIB were there. He'd run over to the location, but they would be gone by the time he arrived. The MIB mainly drove in Cadillacs until John Keel started doing articles about the MIB driving these cars. Then they switched to Volkswagens. The strangest thing about the vehicles is that they were late models, usually from the 40s or 50s, but they would look entirely brand new. One night in January 1967, Mary Heyer was working late at her office in the county courthouse, and an unknown man walked in the door. He was described as very short and had strange eyes covered by thick glasses. He had long jet black hair, cut square like a bowl cut, and spoke in a peculiar, low, halted voice. The man asked for directions to Welsh, West Virginia, and kept getting closer and closer as he talked. His eyes stared almost hypnotically. He questioned her, asking what right she had to print these stories in the paper. Mary was alarmed and scared, so she summoned the newspaper circulation manager to her office. She said that at one point in the discussion, she answered the telephone and noticed the little man pick up a ballpoint pen from her desk. He looked at it in amazement, as though he'd never seen it before. Then he grabbed the pen, laughed loudly, and ran out the building. A couple of weeks later, Hire was crossing the street near her office and saw the same man. He appeared surprised when he realized she was watching, and so he turned away and ran towards a large black car that suddenly came around the corner. The little man climbed in the car and quickly drove away. During the Christmas week, after the bridge disaster, a short man entered Mary Heyer's office. He was dressed in a black suit and tie. He was not interested in the bridge disaster, but wanted to know more about the local UFO sightings. Heyer was too busy to talk with him, so she handed him a file of relevant press clippings instead. He was not interested in them, and insisted on speaking with her. She finally dismissed him from her office. That night, an identical described man visited the home of several witnesses in the area. He made all of them very uneasy and uncomfortable. While claiming to be a reporter from Cambridge, Ohio, he inadvertently admitted that he didn't know where Columbus, Ohio was, even though the two towns are just a few miles apart. Some MIBs even dress in Air Force or military uniform, but always with something just a bit wrong, such as the insignia being in the wrong place, wearing the wrong shoes, or driving a car that is not standard for a military officer. The cars they would drive had license plate that had never been issued to anyone. One woman in Wisconsin said she invited the officer in and offered him jello. He tried to drink the jello. These strange men impersonating officials are also referred to by the term men in black. Another strange occurrence that would be classified as MIB is the Phantom Meter Readers, which is a man dressed in coveralls who would knock on the door of a house in the suburbs and say he'd come to read the electronic or gas meter. He'd go down into the basement and not come out. Eventually, after hours had passed, the owner of the house would go to check on him. Sometimes the man would be gone altogether, never to be seen again, even when there was no way out of the basement. Other times the man would just be starting up the stairs as he opened the door. Then there were the phantom photographers, who would drive up to a house of a witness who just had a baby and say they were professional photographers who wanted to take pictures. 
The new parents were delighted and agreed to have it done. The men would set up their equipment and take pictures, give the people a business card with neighboring town listed, then drive away and never return to sell them the photographs. These photographers would also take pictures of houses after the owner had been witness to something strange. They'd pull up in black Cadillacs, take out a big tripod and a heavy camera, set it on the tripod, snap a picture of the house, then put it all back in the car and drive away without going up to the door or offering to sell the pictures. Some thought they were government agents, some thought they were aliens, some thought they were time travelers or from another dimension or spiritual realm. Whoever they are, they left a strong impression on those who witnessed these mysterious men when they roamed the streets of Point Pleasant.